Hello, my name is Isaiah. Welcome to Who is Louise. And today we have a very informal review of the new Tyler the Creator album, Chromacopia. Um, a few things before we dive in. One, my SD card is about to be full, so this will be very rushed. Um, but that's actually good for me because I tend to ramble, especially when I'm improving things and method, da, 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 and of course, uncut. You know how I am. I'm basically live streaming, just not live. Um, also, if you are offended by the title, I promise you, I'll explain. Um, maybe just poorly. Of course, uh, thank you so much for watching, so let's just get into it. Who's Louise? More like, who's buying the next iPhone? All right, today we are, I already explained what we're doing. See, this, <laughs> welcome to my review of Chromacopia. Um, AKA, and this is a working title, high key mostly for the clickbait, y'all, but um, what cherry bomb should have been, or an elevated cherry bomb. And, and, and I'll explain that once I dive into the themes and the songs and all that different stuff. So first of all, Chromacopia, um, just to get it out of the way, I loved it. I, I, it shattered my expectations, but also my expectations were a little weird because I truly did not expect Tyler to drop an album. Um, I'll just get out of the way. I had some predictions. Some of them weren't met, and therefore, I'm my own understanding of what the album could have been um, was a little disappointed. I I thought Kendrick was going to be on a track. Again, that's not that has nothing to do with Tyler. I thought there was going to be a double track for the tenth album. I actually, or the tenth song, like he always does. I actually thought it was going to be three, like Wolf. That didn't exist. That didn't happen. And I also thought it was going to be um, about somebody loving Tyler, but he didn't love back. Anyways, let's just get that out of the way. Um, for those who are regular viewers, viewers, you know, um, how wrong I was. <laughs> Anyways, Chromacopia, I'm just gonna go track by track, and then kind of explain certain themes, explain why I kind of see it as an elevated cherry bomb in a sense, but, um, first of all, Saint Chroma, featuring Daniel Caesar, one of, um, Tyler's, best intros. I've always loved Tyler's intros. Every single intro works so well. Igor's theme used to be my favorite Tyler track, so I've always been a big fan of the intros, and I've never seen them as very separate. Um, he's very good at them, and for this, it's just so great with the performances and the lusciousness with um, the group vocals, things such as that. It really sets the tone. I also love how smoothly the tr album transitions in the first half of this album into tracks like Ratata, Ta, which is a super um, like heavy banger that's also like very quirky. And through, the, through this album, there's a lot of humor. Um, Tyler doesn't forget how humorous and how interesting his perspective is especially when he adds you know certain bits like tell those brothers and women and stuff like that like he he's really bringing some humor while also talking about super interesting things such as the next track noid which is easily one of my favorite songs as well um all songs leading up to this are great but noid the first teaser to this album for the most part eh, saint chroma i loved noid when i first heard it i love it now it is so good. I love um, the story that's being told, but I also love the instrumentation. I love the samples being used. It is wild. It's something that I've been wanting from a Tyler song that I didn't realize I've been wanting. Um, it's just crazy, and I think I think it's just a smart song. It's really smartly made. Darling, I was, I'll be honest, on my first reaction, I was a little hesitant um, on, but for a few different listens, I've actually really been enjoying it. Um, it's super smooth. It's super simple. It's a great concept about just like um, loving, but not just being bogged down by one person. Again, not something I agree with, but I appreciate Tyler's perspective and it's actually very interesting and it really lets us into seeing how Tyler is as a person. Next, we have Hey Jane, which I'll be honest, was one of those songs where I'm like, I like this in the context of the album. I would never really listen to it outside the album. But then I also then think about, like, does it really fit in this album? There are some love songs. I feel like, obviously, Darling I, Hey Jane, and Judge Judy are very much so love songs. It is weird, though. Like, I Killed You's in the middle of those. Um, and it feels very separate from, you know, once I heard Void, I was like, or Void, Noid, I thought that was going to be, like, our major themes. 
in a way it is. Um, I would have loved less love songs if that makes me sound um, not at all like a heartless maniac. Um, I will say, though, it is a nice song. It is very introspective, and I do like the message. Um, well, not the message. There's not really a message. It's more just like, I, I, I like the narrative that's being told. Um, and, you know, also going off of I Killed You, what a great song about just, like, Black experience with hair um, and identity and also, like, the relationship. Like, I don't know. It's something that you only think about, like, when you're talking to other Black people, but, like, everybody has to do something with their hair. Um you you truly fight with it um and there are some insecurities that i haven't experienced but i've seen um a lot of younger black women that i know struggle with like their hair and societal standards and what they should do with it so i i think that's a great track judge judy not my favorite track it's just not um but i will say it is growing on me but it's just easily my least favorite track here um I think the performance is fine, but it, it feels a little strange once you find out that this Judy character isn't alive anymore. Um, and I just think the name is so, like, I don't think it adds anything to it. Like, I get it. It's Judge Judy. What's the point, you know? Um, Sticky, great. Banger, awesome verses from Glorilla, Sexy Red, Lil Wayne, Tyler himself. Obviously, I also love how ominous it starts as well. Like, this is going to be a banger, but I'm I'm excited how, like, it was acapella at the beginning. And I, I truthfully thought it was going to go that whole way. But, like, it's getting sticky. There's finally a good rap song named Sticky. Um, you know how. Anyways, uh, Take Your Mask Off. A great, great, great track. Um, very like back to the vibes of like flower boys with the instrumentation Did I say flower boys anyways. Um, I, I just think that's a great song with a lot of great commentary. Um, and I always love Tyler's perspective cause he's, he's really like highlighting these things, but he's also calling these people out. It's like, yes, the life that you actually want could be better, but you're not getting it. So take your mask off. Um, great perspective tomorrow has some of tyler's most raw performances along with like him we're gonna skip um thought i was dead for now those two songs together i mean like him i think is the better track tomorrow um is less memorable for me and like him is just oh my god so beautiful it really adds on to the narrative of how tyler um and his relationship with his father is and things such as that and him finding out more information with from his mom it's very interesting um and comparing himself to his father both physically um it's just a really honest and raw and beautiful song um where tomorrow kind of almost feels like it's living in the shadows of it but like mother i'm chasing a ghost that's beautiful that's beautiful i'm also realizing this review is definitely going to go over 10 minutes so we will be clearing my sd card and figuring things out in a second anyways next we have balloon um featuring dochi just a very cute funny fun just crazy song that i just love every time Oh my God, that beat. Love that sample. It's so great. Um, I'm sure a lot of people maybe don't like it, um, but I, I there's something about it that I just find so quirky and charming that I just love. Um, our last track, I Hope You Find Your Way Home, is a very sweet and... It, it almost feels like an Okaga, California in a way where it feels like we're genuinely like journeying somewhere, um, which I appreciate a lot. Not my favorite Tyler closer, but when you have closers such as um, Are We Still Friends, which is my favorite Tyler song, Okaga, California, and Lone, it's kind of hard. But I will say I would put it above Enjoy Right Now Today and Safari. And last but not least, in terms of the songs on this album, we have Thought I Was Dead. I think it is super raw. I think Schoolboy Q's verse is awesome. I think this is genuinely the best song on the album. Maybe I'm just super hyped up, but I just think it's so fun. I don't want to be fat. Oh my God, it sounds so good. We're going to jump into the themes of this album and comparing it to other things. Um, but 
Those were the track reviews. Thank you. That's why. Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. So those are my thoughts on the tracks. Um. For the most part, I loved pretty much every single song. There were only a couple that I wasn't super a big fan of. Um. Judge Judy and Tomorrow. Anyways, now let's get into the cherry bomb of it all. Listen, I am a Tyler fan that's very cherry bomb neutral. I don't love it and I don't hate it. For me, it'd be like a 7 out of 10. I think there are some really great highlights and not even lowlights, just very like uninteresting songs. There are songs that I genuinely do not like, such as Find Your Wings, such as Blow My Load, such as Frickin' Young Perfect. Um, even songs like Smuckers is really growing off me. Songs like Pilot, which I used to really love, is growing off me. Songs like Run. Um, songs, even like Death Camp is really growing off me, which is really strange as well. I was always a big fan of Buffalo, Two Seater. That's a classic. Um, the Brown Stains, Keep the O's, and Okaga California. For me, and Tyler said this himself, that it sounded shifty because he was, you know, in the stages of maturing. Um, for me, I never understood the Anthony Fantano levels of hate for Cherry Bomb. It's never been my least favorite Tyler album. Or maybe it is, but like, maybe I just like all of his other albums just slightly better. I mean, regardless, I just find Chromacopia to be stylistically a better version of Cherry Bomb. I think visually um, they're very different, but I will say there are a lot of like explosions. A lot of the new stuff for Cherry Bomb, um, or sorry, Chromacopia, they they both depicted like um, kind of like a vast area and there's Tyler kind of like exploding something and it's big. A lot of the songs deal with like, kind of like aggressive topics and look I'm Tyler and I'll oh, you don't even know me look at this then there are some love songs I'm falling in love I mean what's a Tyler album without any love songs um there's like those posse cuts like a smuckers um but then in the case of like a sticky you know there's um the, I don't know I I feel like there's some heavy parallels between Cherry Bomb and uh, Chromacopia, and I feel like Chromacopia, of course, like, different. Cherry Bomb's production was very interesting. <laughs> um, and, and Tyler matured both as an artist um, and as a person. Listen, comparing these two albums is very strange because there are some things that I just don't actually think Tyler could have done that he does on Chromacopia, I don't think he could have done them on Cherry Bomb. I think he's developed as an artist so much, um, and I still think he's not credited enough for how insane of an artist he is. Not a rapper, not a, a musician, just an artist in general. Like, he is insane now. Um, he always was kind of insane, but now he's, like, really insane. Regardless, I do think this album as a whole... Um, captures something that I feel like an album like Cherry Bomb wasn't able to capture. I feel like it's ominous. I feel like it's rambunctious. I feel like it creates so much emotion and I feel like it's so mature while also letting us into Tyler's humor, letting us into Tyler's mind, letting him less into his fears, his worries, his concerns, um, but also a, with a certain level of flexicution that you need a charisma that was only present on like a call me if you get lost i think tyler with this has created one of his best albums to date um and i truly believe that he will hopefully soon be credited as one of the greats as one of the goats he is awesome he has always been at least interesting as an artist he is truly one of the best if not the best artist out right now i truly believe that um and with chromacopia he just gave us another great album it's it's as if he can't miss um if i had to rate this album in which i will i would give it a low nine and and I'm just so happy with what he gave us. I'm so excited to see him live. I'm so excited to listen to these songs for the remainder of the year. And I'm so excited to predict 
a whole new set of predictions for the next one. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, comment, like, subscribe. Brand, okay, I'm done with Chromacopia now, y'all. <laughs> it's over. We're done. We're gonna, I have a really great video. If you stayed to this long, you know. I'm gonna tell you right now. The next video, unless something else pops up and I have to upload something else and before, we're doing an album art tier list with Mead, if you remember Mead from some of my older videos a few months ago. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Peace out. Um, and let me know your thoughts of Chromacopia in the comments, because I actually do listen and I read every comment. Um, you may think I don't read it. I read every comment. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye.